Welcome. In this video, we're going to be showing you how to work a little more detailed with masks. And uh, we are also going to be working with some files that are a little different than the files I normally give you. So normally, I've been giving you JPEG files to be working with. And in this case, we're going to be working with a PSD. Here's a mergeflower.psd. You might notice that I also have several other documents open at the moment. And that's okay because we're going to be working on putting all these together later on. If you take a look at this PSD, you might notice that I've already cut out the background. We have a transparent edge around the flower. And if you think about it first, you might just think it's a, been cut out or copied and pasted in here. But the truth is the entire image is still there. What I wanted to do was show you a little bit about investigating the PSDs that I give you. So the first thing you want to do in this case is I've given you a PSD. Take a look at the layers. See what's going on. You'll see that I have the original image down here below called the background layer. And then I have a duplicate of that layer with a mask. And the truth is this is what most of your assets should look like as you're getting them prepared for use in your major collage project. What I've done is I started with the background and I created a selection and then I refined that selection and then it exported or output it to a new layer with layer mask. So make sure you are following that procedure. So let's take a look a little closer at the way this is set up. Uh, you'll notice that maybe my icons here, my thumbnails for my layers are larger than yours. I want to show you how to change that on yours. Sometimes they get in the way, but sometimes they're great to be bigger. I like to have it bigger for use in my videos so that you can see what's going on. If you right-click anywhere below these layers, you'll see that you can put in no thumbnails, and it just shows you the names of layers, small thumbnails, medium, and large. This way, my thumbnail shows the uh, entire thing here. You can see the picture and then its corresponding mask. Now I wanted to make sure you understood how to navigate between the two. Remember that you can click on one versus the other. Okay, If you click on the layer mask, it'll have a border around it and you'll have all your colors available to you down here. If you switch over to the layer mask by clicking on it once, you'll see that it highlights around the edges. And now I don't have colors available to me. For example, if I attempt to change my color to a different color by clicking on my foreground and then choosing like a red and I click OK, I'm going to end up with a corresponding gray value. That's because the layer mask only may have black and white or grayscale colors. So that's how that works. Make sure that if you're working on something, you're like, why can't I change my color? Check to see if you're working on a mask. You also may notice that a particular image will say somewhere in the top here, and you can actually see it on this merge sky image, it says RG, it's actually uh, cut off there, on RGB. My image has a particular mode. So another thing that you, you can mess up with is if you're looking at a picture and for some reason you can't go to color, it could be because your image mode is wrong. When you go to image mode, you'll see that there's a lot of different options. The kind we're going to be working with right now is for the screen. So we're going to be working with RGB color. If, for example, you were in grayscale, and I'm going to go ahead and just tell it to not merge and watch what happens here. So it turned it grayscale, right? I can try to choose colors, but I'm not going to get colors. I'm going to step backward. So just check those two things. It'll say gray up here instead of RGB if you're in uh, grayscale mode, as well as if you're on a mask that's another reason why you may only be able to work with black and white. So let's take a look at this mask more closely. It's a pretty good selection and I think I've done a good job on it. But I'm going to take a look at it under its uh, masks to see ac actually how the channel looks. I'm going to alt click so you hold down alt um, and then tap the mask la uh, the layer there and what happens is you end up with this version here and this will show you all the parts that have been uh, masked out. You can see that some parts are some grays, you can see the little furry little hairs or whatever those were, little maybe um, thorns on the stem but basically this is what the mask looks like. Now you can 
modify the mask right here. But I want you to understand you can also just be working on the mask and viewing the image. For example, right now, if I were to edit this, I could paint with black. I'm going to switch to black and swap that out. And let's say I have a bigger brush. I'm going to draw a smiley face here. This should cut a hole, right? Make transparent the section of my flower. Let's take a look at how it looks. I'm going to click back on the layer mask or layer image. And there you go, you have a hole. Now, when I did that, you notice that now this has been selected and I'm no longer working. My colors came back in the corner. So, what I want you to understand though is that if you just click on the mask once, now I'm working on the mask, notice I'm in black and white again, I could choose to modify that mask right now. I'm going to switch to white and just paint some white in here. All right. Another way we could work with a mask is that right now the mask is connected to our image. There's this little lock in between. And you might have come across this particular feature um, by accident and if you notice you can click it off and then what that does is that unlinks these two so if you have the little chain it's linked if you unclick it it'll but not be linked now what does that mean well when it's chains the chain is there you end up having the ability to move the whole thing around for example I go to my move tool I can move this around no problem and you see both of them shifted I'm gonna step backward if I uncheck it depending on which one I'm on so right now I'm on the mask so it'll move the mask watch how this works the transparency acts like a little window you see how that functions I'm gonna undo that if I'm on the picture it's like I'm moving behind the window so you can see how that goes and I'll step back alright so that's a little bit about working with the mask once it's there but how do you get the mask there in the first place Well, let me show you I'm going to go ahead and turn this eye off and another way you can create a mask I'm going to duplicate the original background layer make sure it's on I'm going to click the eyeball so I can see it this one's going to say drawn mask okay so this one here I'm going to draw the mask myself and to do that I have to first give this layer a mask you can go to uh, layer and um, there are ways to add a layer mask so you can just tell it to reveal all, hide all from transparency. If I tell it to reveal all, it's going to you know, show the whole thing. So it would give me a, a white mask. If I did hide all, it would give me a black mask. But let me tell you, I hardly ever have to go in here to mess with this because I can do it straight from the layers panel. If I alt-click the layer uh, mask icon, it's going to give me a black mask and watch it disappear the whole thing. There, that's one way to do it. I'm going to step backward, control alt z and if I just click it normal it'll give me a white mask okay so in this case I think you could work either way right you could make a white mask and you could start painting out here in the periphery just uh, with a bunch of black right and erase all the parts you know you can try to be really accurate around there that's one way you could do it right I'm gonna delete my mask by right click on it right clicking on it and saying delete layer mask but I think it'd be better to just do an alt mask Okay, so if you do an alt mask, it makes a black one, so it hides everything. All right, so now I could simply paint in my object from the middle out. Okay, and if I ever paint outside of it, like oh, I got some green there, right? No problem. Just switch colors back to black, and you can erase that part. Now, obviously, all of this is definitely a longer way of selecting it or creating this thing, but I want you to understand how you can draw your own masks whenever you need to. Also, a little quick way to switch between these two colors to swap your foreground and background is just to tap X. That'll switch between them so you can easily switch back and forth between erasing and revealing. Okay, so that's another way you could use the uh, mask. The way that I really would do this, okay, this project, the way I'd get from here to here, the, the, the one I showed you at the beginning, is by using the quick selection tool okay so I would start on the background layer and I would switch over to the quick selection tool make sure it's on the fourth tool down and on this fourth tool down basically what I need to do is make sure that 
I am selecting the positive shape of the image because the background obviously is a lot different. So I'm going to just pop around this one area at a time, trying to add in the, the different petals on the, the flower. There's going to be some parts I don't want. That's okay. We won't worry about them right now. The truth is I need to make sure that I get all of these in pretty good on my rough selection here. It's a little tricky down here with the um, little furry looking thorns or whatever those are. Not really sure. Anyway, I'm just going to, in some of these up here, there's going to be some gaps. I need to make sure I get all those in. All right. And I basically want to make sure I knock all those out in my first little stage. I'm going to use some Alt, so I'm going to hold down Alt and subtract some of this. All right, much better. I'm going to subtract some up here too. All right, definitely want to get in some of these gaps because if I don't have anything in them, they won't let me remove them later. So when I'm refining the edge, get this little thing right here. You just got to get a little bit, okay? So I think in general that's a pretty good job. I want to make sure that it's all rough selected the best I can. And once I have it all rough selected, I can do a refine edge. Now, once again, make sure you're on the overlays so you can see both. And make sure you do a smart radius, maybe of about one or so pixels. And I'm going to start just painting in some of these regions to fix the edges. So that's how, how I would spend the time getting that. Looks like I'm definitely having some trouble there I'll have to fix. And your goal here, right, even though I gave you a pretty good selection to begin with, uh, I want you to definitely spend some time making a good selection yourself, just running around different parts of your flower petal. All right, because your job is to make a good selection. That's what I need. Good selection. All right, and I think we're going to go around the edge of this, make it kind of soft. Around here, I'm missing a little bit of the end. Still a little spot there. All right, so definitely have some problems right here and here. Not a big deal. We'll handle it. All right. That's selected. Okay, so I think that's a pretty good job. I'm going to go ahead and tell it to output to. I don't need to do a decontaminate because this is all green out here. Um, let's see. New layer with layer mask. So this is the main process. Make your rough selection. We find the edge. Buff around it. And always output to a new layer with layer mask. Decontaminating colors when needed. Once you do that, go ahead and click OK, and you got your new layer. Now, I told you I had a couple problems up here, right? These were not correct. If I take a look at them, they are semi-transparent, so they'll probably show up in the mask. So in this case, I'm going to Alt-click the mask and take a look. And yes, they're already there. Now, what I can do is I could try to paint that. I could go to my brush tool, and I could try to paint it small here. I'm going to paint some, some black in here and try and make it disappear, right? The other option is, because it's already got a drawing there, and that this is white, is I could use my burn tool. Okay, remember dodge, burn, sponge? Here's the burn tool. I could tell it to burn out shadows, right? And I'm going to have a very slow percentage here, and I could see how it does darkening that up. See, that's making that area darker without adjusting the white. So that's another way you can make it erase something. Here, the same thing. Let's see how it does. See how the more I stroke over it, over it. It's going to get a darker, darker little region there. So some of these parts that are coming through too bright, I can cut them down. And it won't damage the white part because they are um, only going to affect the shadows. So I can do that. Up here, i got a couple of issues. I'll probably just paint over those. See how that works. Maybe get over here, paint over that. All right, let's look around. So down here, definitely need to make that darker. So... Once again, I'd go to my burn tool, and I'd make this go in much darker here. Obviously, it would work faster if I changed my percentage, but I want you to see how the effect of going in that way, because you end up not damaging the white, because it's always going to stay in good shape. Uh, I got some over here, maybe taken. All right, and then down here, I definitely want to get rid of that line, paint over it. And there we go. All right, and we'll go ahead and click back on our picture and see how we're looking. 
All right, it looks like there are some little bits here that I need to get rid of, so let's check that out. I'm going to, once again, alt, um, no, wait, here, I want to alt click the mask so I can see that, and then bring out the, well, how about bring out the dodge tool again, see how that does. Yeah, it's going to clean up those things and get around those little hairs, those hairs are all by themselves. All right, so let's see how that looks. Click back on the picture. Okay. So there's still some here that's coming through I need to get rid of. No problem. Just click back on the mask. And because now I can see it, I'm going to try and see if I can get rid of it here. Just trying to knock out some of those little lines. Okay, and your goal is just to get that as cleaned up as possible. It's not perfect. It's okay. It probably won't no be noticeable, but you want to try and do your best job as you can. So once you get your mask, you might have to do some refining on the inside. All right. Now this mask is ready to be used. You could, at the end of this, apply the mask, but we're going to keep it all there just in case there's a part of the petal I missed. You could apply the layer mask. I want you to know what that means. If you right click on the mask, you get this option here. You can disable it temporarily. That'll bring it all back. Enable it. You can delete the layer mask. You can apply the layer mask. Okay, so if you apply the layer mask, that's just going to cut it out completely. I don't want to do that. I just want you to see how it works. So I'll step backward. So I want you to make a really good cutout. Try and get as good as this one up here or better, okay? And make a really good selection of this flower. And then remember that the process for every picture is going to be the same. You make a rough selection with whatever selection tools you need. Then you refine the edge. You buff around to get any parts that need to be refined. And then you output to a new layer mask and check for any issues. I'm seeing one right here. Yeah, definitely would need to fix that in some of these grays up here. So make sure that you understand the difference between working on the picture and on the mask. And make sure you have a really good selection for this particular flower. And that's it for this video.